Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. Y'all a little low on me today, but that's all right. God is high and lifted up. <laughs> he is high and lifted up. And his train will fill the temple. Come on, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. We honor the Lord on today for his goodness and his mercy. Amen. Amen. We honor him for his goodness and his mercy. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We thank God for a day that we have not seen. We thank God for all of you that are here today. We just thank him on today. Glory to God, because without him, we are nothing. Glory to God. But because he loved us so much, according to his word, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall have everlasting life. Does anybody have everlasting life? Glory to God. Has anybody really received his love on today? Hallelujah. We thank God for his love on today. Glory to God. And our pastor has already preached. Is that all right? How many, how many feel like pastors already preached? <laughs> Amen. So the preached word has already went forth. So I'm just going to talk to you for a few minutes, and then I'm going to move right out of your way. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. We thank God for all the believers in the house on today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for Sister Devin and Brother Julia being with us on today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Maybe you don't know, glory to God, but we have went into Star Christian Academy a few times and pre presented the gospel of Jesus Christ and Sister Devin, glory to God, and Brother Julian both have accepted Jesus, glory to God, as Lord and Savior. Hallelujah, 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 glory to God, and, and glory to God, and, and sometimes, you know, when you're new, uh, in your faith or you're new to the church and you're new to the body of Christ, glory to God, you really don't know what it's all about, but you heard the gospel. You heard the gospel and the God gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. The gospel is that God loved us so much, glory to God, that he laid down his life that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Glory to God. And a lot of people think that the abundant life is in things. A lot of people think that the abundant life is in people. The only personage that abundant life is in is in Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Life, glory to God, does not exist. Hear me and hear me well in the abundance of things. The world will tell you the more things you have, the more blessed you are. But I beg the difference. When you said things, what are you talking about, Pastor? Glory to God. A lot of people think that the more clothes I have, the more houses that I have, the more money that I have, that makes me blessed. Or that makes me better than everybody else. Glory to God. But I beg to differ. I want to tell you truly what the abundant life really is all about. Real life and the abundant life is love, joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. Do I need to repeat that again? Because the world has made us believe that what we have in material possessions is nothing wrong with it. There's a place for it. But the world wants us to believe that when I have the car, when I have the money, 
When I have all the finest things in life, then I have made it. When I'm successful, when I go to the right school, when I have the right education, when I have the right letters behind my name, then I have made it. That's what the world tells us. And then the world tells us knowledge is what? But what did you learn yesterday? That's part of it. That's part of it. And so all of these things that the world has taught us about having, because you know we run after all of this stuff. And we're teaching our children to run after this stuff. And if we're doing that, we're teaching them wrong if they're believers, if they're part of the kingdom of God. And we believe that if our children are going to college and they're participating in different things, then they are the chosen ones. They are the ones that, glory to God, are, are the ones we're going to look at and pay attention to. Those are the, Le, 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 what's his name? LeBrons. Those are the Stephen Currys. Glory to God. Those are the, uh, 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 what's the one with the long ponytail in wrestling? Bianca, Bianca, glory to God. And then we see, um, glory to God, uh, what's his name? No, give me a football player. The one that fell on the, yes, the more he going back to football, he need to go sit down. That is not the place for him to go back to, but somebody has told this young man that he should go back, but he shouldn't be going back. You know why? Because that was a warning. Glory to God. If he goes back to football, they can plan his funeral. Listen. I told you pastor already preached, didn't he? Glory to God. So pastor, I hear you saying all of these things. So pastor, what, 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 what should I be going after? Now that I'm a believer. Now that I'm not in the world anymore, now that I'm operating in another kingdom or another system, because, see, we are, the Bible tells us, glory to God, that we are born and shaped in what? What is that? We, we, we born in this stuff. We born in mess. All of us was born in mess. Every last one of us. Why do you say that, Pastor? Well, let's go back to the beginning. Glory to God, when God created us when he created Adam what did he do everybody know the beginning story right everybody I need to refresh you okay no problem we can do that because listen we got to get it right we have to get it right we have to get understanding we have to get understanding who we are and why we're here Glory to God. We are not here just because we think we chose to come here. Glory to God. No, God sent us here. God chose us to send us here in time. Let's go to the beginning. In the beginning, Genesis 1. Because look, we lose, we lose too many of our young people. We are losing too many of our young people to... Uh, stuff to things to things that they're running after that don't mean nothing to them but the world has blinded their minds it have blinded them and made them think that this is the way this is what they're supposed to be after and nobody's telling these babies the truth but I'm here today to tell you the truth about the matter of the fact Life is not in the abundance of things. Okay? Let's get that straight. You need to understand that. It doesn't make you who you are. A fine car and all the money in the world do not make you who you are. You are already who you are because of God. You are made in his image. You are made in his likeness. You don't need to do nothing to change your personage. What you need to do is to change the way you see things. Change. Change. 
Listen, this thing ain't got nothing to do with the way you look. This thing ain't got nothing to do with what you wear. This thing ain't got nothing to do with uh, all of what the world has told you. It has nothing to do. Your hair, your clothes, your shoes, you're more than that. You're more than a house. You're more than a car. You're more than all the money in the world. I don't care who got all the money in the world. you more than that. So don't be fooled. And a lot of our young people have been bamboozled by this world. And that's why we so see so much division amongst us, our young people, the old people, the middle-aged people. We are divided. And the division, glory to God, especially in the African-American community, was, was happening in, in 1814, was it? When the slave masters came down to Virginia, when the guy came down to Virginia, he was a slave master. And he came down to teach the slave masters how to keep their slaves, slaves. And he gave some directives on how to keep them divided. And it's still working today. But we got to break these curses. Because it's time for us to come together and stop fighting one another. A house divided can't stand. Meaning when we are split, we can't come together and get nothing done. But when we come together, and that's what the enemy don't want. He don't want us to come together. He want us to keep fighting against each other. And we ain't nothing going to happen as long as we keep weak because we're going to keep seeing our young people die and we're going to keep seeing us go further and further away from God. And the only way that this thing can get changed, everybody is trying to figure out how to stop gun violence. They're trying to figure out how to stop people. Look, they don't really want you to stop killing each other. They want you to continue to kill one another because you helping them out. Because that's the agenda of the enemy of your soul. Now ask another question. Because I hear. Ask another question. Let's go to Genesis 1. Because it's time for us to get it right. It's time for the church, the real church of Jesus Christ, the real church of this book, the real church that he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's the church that we're getting ready to see. As the prophetic went forth on last night, that we're getting ready to see rise. Why? Because you have some true uh, mothers or fathers and mothers of the gospel that are preach the gospel and that will teach you and love you if you allow them. Amen? Go to Genesis 1. Genesis 1. I don't see my reader. She must have exited a place. But anyway... In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit, capital S mean, that is the spirit of God, moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament and the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, 
and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, not oceans, seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And to rule over the day and the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image. Let who? Let us. Let God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy Ghost make man in his image. They were all there together making man in his image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for me and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green herb for me and it was so and God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Genesis, the second chapter. 
Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all of his work, which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground, but there went up a mist from the ground and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils and breathed at the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from this it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, which there it, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Badalion and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia, Africa. And the name of the third river is Hildekel. That is it which goeth toward the east of Israel. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest therein, thou surely shalt die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever ever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woe man and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woe man because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his, his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked. The man and his wife were not ashamed. Amen? Got it. Creation story. That's how we got started. So, when somebody wants to talk to you, about how things got started, how the earth got started, then you need to refer them to the book. You need to refer them to Genesis 1, the first 
chapter and the second chapter because we have a lot of debate about how things got started. There's no debate against the word of God because whatever God said in his word, that's how it went. Whatever he says in his word, that's how it goes. Whatever he said, that's what he said, and that's what he meant. And that's the beginning of the story. That's what Genesis means, beginning. Glory to God. And it's believed because Moses gave this story. And it's believed that Moses, got, God gave him this revelation on Mount Sinai. Because God wants people to understand how things begun. And what did God do with everything that we see on the earth? He did what? He spoke it into existence. So with everything that we see in the heavens and the earth, and don't let nobody fool you about no solar system. You ain't heard nothing about no solar system being said right there. You said it was, it was two great lights. And those lights was to divide the day and the night and for the seasons and the years. So all we have is the sun and what else? The moon at night. Though and the stars, God created that. Amen. But we have people put all of this other stuff in there. The Bible said don't add nothing to the word of God and don't take nothing from it. Whatever you see in there, whatever he said, that's what he said and that's what he meant. He formed man from the dust. You want to know how man got here? That's how he got here. He formed him from the dust. You want to know how woman got here? Woman got here from when God put man to sleep. And he put man to sleep. He took one of his ribs out and he fashioned Adam a woman. He didn't make woman from dirt. He made Adam. And then he made woman from man. And then he gave the woman to the man. And the man named her. Adam named all the animals. Adam named everything. And that's how everything got started. And God's original plan was for us to have what? Dominion. He wanted us to rule over all of this that he had put in the earth. He never intended for us to rule over each other. God's deal was for us to love one another. Look out for one another. Take care of one another. Help one another. Make sure everybody's needs are met. But then he told Adam, he put him in that garden, and if you didn't see who the original people were and where the Garden of Eden were, then I might need to go read it again. Now you tell me, where was the Garden of Eden? It really ain't called Africa, but that's what they name it. Glory to God. But that's the original place. The Garden of Eden was Africa. What they call, but it's not really Africa. They renamed it. It's Abkiblion. That's why we need to study. So we we'll understand. And see, this is why we've been duped and we don't know what's going on because we accept everything somebody give us, everything somebody tell us, we accept that we don't never take the time to study. Okay? I'm talking about study the word of God. This mess they giving y'all in school ain't nothing. It's a system. It's a man-made system that they put out there to dumb you and me down. But if you get into that book, the Bible, if you don't understand it, you're a believer now. You have the spirit of God in you now. And all you got to do is ask and it shall be given. You want to know something? You want to know about your creator? You want to know your purpose? You're a believer now? You got the spirit of God in you now? Ask your father, God. We asking Google. We asking Jap Jap Chat. We asking all of this other stuff. We seeking out all of this other stuff, and they can't give you the real answers, baby. The real answers is in the book and in you. 
It's in you. Because when you received him, you received him. You received the creation of man. You received his spirit. And he's in you. But you can't believe that because you got so much other stuff in you that you believe in. And you don't took that, 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 and, and it's done run you crazy. But if you had the spirit of the book, if you had the spirit of God in you, glory to God, and if you really believe that you had his spirit in you, you would not be seeking out all of these other little G's. You'd be seeking out the big G. The big G of the book. The one that know everything. The one that created everything. The one that said, let there be, and so it was. You got that in you. But you're looking at something that ain't got no power. When we get him, the creator of all things, we got everything, baby. But they don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know that you're the people. They don't want you to know that everything in the beginning was B-L-A-C-K. What did I just spell? They don't want you to know that. Jesus was black. Adam. Abraham. All of them. Look like you and me. That's the secret. That's the secret of all secret societies. That we the people. But I dare not preach and teach that on live stream. Because if I do, they gonna kill me. Because they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know who you truly are. They want you to continue to think and believe that you are nothing and nobody and you came from monkeys and, 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 and all of that other stuff. But the devil is alive, baby. The Bible say you shall know the truth and the truth shall do what? Hey. And being free means that I ain't looking to this world system for what I need. I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. Meaning that I'm here. I've been sitting here by the creator himself to wake up everybody. Wake up his people and let them know who they truly are. You the head, baby, not the tail. You the head. You the people. Now that should put a smile on your face. They ain't never told you that in school, did they? They ain't going to tell you that. They told you Christopher Columbus discovered America. Christopher Columbus never came to America. They try to dumb us down to make us think. Because see, when they bought us over here on them slave ships, baby, they bought us over here to be slaves. They bought us over here to work for them. They bought us over here to make them rich. And we have done just that. And you know why it happened like that? Because Deuteronomy 28, God told us through his servant Moses, if you do not obey me, these curses shall come upon you. He said, but if you obey me, you will be blessed. But if you read Deuteronomy 28, uh, you're going to see all of those curses. Uh, and you're going to see, glory to God, uh, the great transatlantic slave trade. Uh, you're going to see what God told Moses uh, to tell my people, uh, if you don't obey me, uh, you're going to go uh, in the Egypt again. Uh, you're going to go in the bondage again and you're gonna go in ships but you don't know that because you ain't never heard that all you ever had presented to you in this book was a white blue eyed long haired Jesus Jesus had, had no white uh, uh, that kind of hair he had the Bible said in Revelation 3 he had hair white as wool 
Let me take this half and you're going to see the wool. And the said he had feet is bronze. What well, color is bronze? Come on, somebody. But they gave us. They gave us this Western civilization, gave us what it wanted us to have. What it wanted is that blue eye, straight hair, pink skin. That's not Jesus. That ain't him. That ain't him. That ain't him. When you look in that mirror and you see your nose, that you don't like, and that hair, that'll give you some serious biceps, glory to God, hallelujah, you don't like it, because you got an identity in your head, glory to God, that you need to have this, and you need to have that nice pointed nose, and you need to talk a certain way, glory to God, come on now, really read the book. Really read the book. And when you look at all them names in there that we can't hardly pronounce, and you look in there, glory to God, hallelujah, and you see the character and the attitude behind the book, you know it had to be black people. But see, we've been given something, and we just took it. We just took whatever they said, just like we do now. Mama and them be trying to tell you about the old remedies of the day that they used to go out to certain trees, glory to God. And Mama and Grandma and them used to get certain things off the trees, the pine needles and stuff, glory to God, and boil it and give it to the babies, glory to God, and it will heal the babies. But now they're telling us, take all these drugs, glory to God, and put it in our system. And what is it doing? But we believe that they know. They do know. They know exactly what they're doing to you, killing you. You know, they used to say a mind is a terrible thing to waste. It is. But then what did they have behind that? They had, didn't they have somebody military behind that? Remember? The army won't have. You know what they were telling us then, co -pastor. Yeah, give me your mind. Give me your mind. Let me have your mind because you don't know what to do with it. You give it to me, and I'm going to show you what to do with it, and I'm going to destroy it. And when I get ready to use it, anytime I want to use it to make you destroy somebody else, then that's what I'm going to do. Give me your mind. But Jesus said, give me your mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So what you're saying, Pastor, I need a new mind. I need a new mindset. Because the mindset of this world, the spirit of this world is enmity against God. And this system of this world is going to teach you all the things of this world. And as long as you keep your face and your mind down in learning from this world, your mind is going to be destroyed. And it don't want you to get in the book and, and get the real knowledge and learn who you truly are and learn your capabilities through Christ Jesus. The Bible said, and God 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 said, everything is held together by what God said. What you saying? The Bible says life and death is where? It's in what you say. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So whatever's in your mind, whatever's in your heart, that's what's coming out your mouth. And whatever's coming out your mouth is what you put in your mind. And what are you putting in your mind? What Facebook see? That little girl tried to get on Snapchat. They try Instagram. What they saying, people come to me and saying what they saying on Instagram. Look, Instagram, whatever they saying ain't doing, I'm going to destroy you. Well, Pastor, they no, they distort the scripture. Get in the book and see what the book said, what he said. He told Adam, you can eat of every tree in this garden, 
except the tree of good and evil. And what Adam do? What did Adam do? What did Adam do? He ain't from the tree. That's why we're in the condition. He ain't from the tree. Because he blamed who? He blamed the woman for making him disobey God. But remember that she was in him. And God, huh? Okay, I'm done with that. But anyhow, he gave Adam the charge. He told the man not to eat. And he said, in the day that you eat, read the third chapter. Y'all keep reading that. Y'all see what I'm saying. The day that you eat of that tree, what's going to happen to you? You going to surely, what does surely mean? Oh, it's going to happen. Ain't no doubt about it. And when Eve ate, did anything happen? Nothing happened when Eve ate. It was when Adam ate. The curse failed. And that's where death came into the world. Part of the curse is the death. That's why our, uh, he cursed the ground. That's why stuff died. He cursed it. When God cursed something, baby, it's cursed. Okay? So because of man's disobedience, because of our disobedience, it causes us to walk in a curse. But we don't have to. Why don't we have to? Because of Jesus. Because of the word, which was in the beginning, which was Jesus. John 1 and 1 will tell you about the word being in the beginning, in the beginning which was Jesus. When he said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. That was God the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost making man then. And they've always been. And because of Jesus, that's why we jump and shout about him. That's why we call his name because of what he did at Calvary's cross. What did he do at Calvary? We just celebrated. And we didn't celebrate no Easter bunny. It was Resurrection Sunday. It was because it was on Good Friday, which was the day that he was nailed to that cross. They killed him. He had to die. He came here to die for you and me. That's why he came. Yeah, Black Friday, that's a whole nother story. Okay? But he didn't stay in the grave. He didn't stay in the grave. He ain't in the grave now. And so that's why I can stand up and preach. That's why the pastor can stand up and preach. And that's why you can jump and shout. And that's why you can praise your God. Because he did what no other man could do. There was no man under God's earth after Adam's sin that could atone for the sins of this world. That could die. That was pure enough. That could die. That would bring us back into the grace of God. Into the salvation of God. This is what the jump is about. This is what the shout is about. This is what the church is about. God, the church, is God's ecclesia. The called out ones. The ones that God has called out of darkness. The ones that he's called out of this world. To show forth his marvelous light. To show forth his glory in the earth. To, to have a testimony about what he did for you and me. Because the Bible said we all born. When Adam sinned, we all sinned and we all fell. Okay? But Jesus has came. And he's made it right. So we don't have to stay in sin. He's already conquered sin. He's already paid the price that satisfied God for our sins. All we have to do is accept what he's done. And we get right back into the original place that he designed for us. And we can go on and follow him. Be his followers. And do like he said. And show forth the light. Not get all the gold. Not get all the silver. Not say, hi, hi, look at me. Because it ain't even about us. It's about him. 
but he loved us so much that he gave all of us, gave it all up. He came down out of his glory and died like a sinner, but he was a sinless man. He died for you and I to be righteous, to love one another, to be able to do that. Well, yes, you can. You can't tell me you can't do it. The deal is you won't do it. Because if he's in you, you have the ability to do it. You just got to change your mind. Because if I can change your mind, I can change your life. One thought from God will change your life. If you ever decide to stop looking like the world says and doing like the world says, you know what? I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust God. And I'm going to take that faith that we have to live by because I am the righteousness of God now. Because I've accepted him as my personal savior, that means I'm back in right standing with him now. And because I'm back in right standing with him now, guess what? I can do whatever he say I can do. It's not according to what nobody else say. It's according to what he said about me in his word. Because he said, he said, the day you hear my voice, harder not your heart. The day I heard his voice, call me. Uh, I was back in 19, uh, it was uh, 1994. I was doing my own thing, sending it up. This flesh loves sin. It hates God. It's an enmity against God. This flesh don't want to do nothing for God. It wants to do everything for this world. So back in 1994, glory to God, when God was calling me back unto his, himself, glory to God, I was sending it up. Good God, and I wasn't ready to come out of sin. I was not, but God said, it's time, it's time. I don't let you do your own thing long enough. It's time for you to come. And I came to the church because I grew up in the church. I was saved at 12 years old, just like you see them getting baptized. When we was 12 years old, glory to God, when they ran revivals. And we, at 12, we had to come to the morning bench. That's what they called it. We had to come up to get saved. And we came. And we got baptized. We went down in that water. Didn't have a clear understanding, but we did it because we had parents and aunts and grandmothers that took us to church. And they made us go, go through that because they had an understanding. Glory to God. And they know once we went down in that water and we came up, that we was up under a covenant. We was under that covenant. And no matter where we went or what we did, this is the kind of God we serve. He was faithful to honor his covenant. No matter what we did, because he knew he had already provided for us. And it no matter where we went or what we did or how far we ran, glory to God, he knew at his appointed time, oh, you coming. Oh, you coming. Oh, you coming. Why you think you coming now? Why you think you keep coming? You'll run back and you'll come back. You'll go back and you'll come back. Because after a while, guess what's going to happen? Amen. You're going to fully surrender. Glory to God. Oh, that's it. Because when God say, I got a plan for your life and I got purpose for you, and what he do, everybody that comes into this earth realm, God brings you here. Because he got a plan for your life and my life. And there's purpose. I never thought I'd be standing preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I always thought I'd get old with my husband of almost 40 years sitting on the porch doing our own thing. It ain't want nothing good. It ain't want nothing bad either. But it was what we wanted to do. You understand what I'm saying? And so when God called me, glory to God, I came, sister. But the world was still holding on to me. Still holding on to me. 
Glory to God. And they were saying, come on back. Come on back. And guess what? I went back. But you better believe. When I went back, it was like I went back into a long, dark tunnel. Term, tunnel. God had snatched me out, brought me into the light. But then I went back, and I, it was like a long dark, like something just sucked you back. And I couldn't see. I couldn't see. I couldn't see. I couldn't see. He turned me over to a reprobate mind. All I could do, the devil had me. He had me. He had me. And all I could do, you know all I could do, baby? Well, all I could do was wherever the devil, wherever he led me, that's where I was because God had turned me over to him. And I got so, 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 so sick and tired. I couldn't do nothing but lay on a sofa. I couldn't get up, man. I couldn't get out. I couldn't get out of that place that I was in. Because the Lord, you don't want the Lord to turn you over. Because if he turns you over, you might never get up. You may never get up. I'm telling you, people play too much. I got the news this morning. About my double cousin's son, ain't even 30 years old. They might be 30. Dead. Yeah. And, and over this, this few weeks, all these young people going to prom, dying, all of this stuff happening, I'm saying, God, where did their souls go? Because it's a point that the man wants to die. And then after death, it's the judgment. And if we don't receive Jesus and follow him, and we die without him, we don't go to be with him. We, it's all eternity. We, we're away from him. We can't get back to him. And we think it's a game. We think it's a joke. We think life is just play play. It's real, baby. But you know what? God, with his good say, had mercy on my son. He had mercy. I said, God, if you let me get up, if you let me get up from this place right here one more time, God, I'm going to get to that church. And when I get to that church, God, just let me get up. And see, when you disobey God and you go back and you do stuff, you put other people's lives in jeopardy. The Lord let me get up from that place. And I got to that church. And when they opened the doors of that church, I got up, I couldn't wait, and I went this way, that way. My husband came that way, and Marcus came down the aisle. We did not plan it that way. And when I got down to that altar, that pastor that was standing before me, he had a patch on his eye. And he looked at me, and nobody heard it but me. He said, witchcraft, a warlock, and a witch. They had cast a spell on me. But God had allowed. And the Lord saved me all over again. He brought me out. That's why it's so important that you obey him. We don't know the day nor the hour that he's coming for us. I bet my cousins, both of them, didn't think 
that the Lord was coming for their only son. Not knowing that God has already given his only son that we may have life. And ever since he allowed me to come back and rededicate, guess what? Ain't went back no more. I owe God. We owe God. We owe God. We owe him. I don't care how young, how old, we owe God. He paid a debt for us that we could not pay for ourselves. He gave his son, his only son, that you and I might have a right to eternal life. And with that said, I open the doors of the church.